On behalf of the Philadelphia Freedom Center, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Union League Club of Philadelphia and to introduce David Horowitz. I'd like to thank my associate, Brittany Patrice, for attending to today's event. Thank you, thank you, Brittany. And I'd like to also offer my thanks to C-SPAN for being here today to cover this event for its national audience. I remind you that immediately following today's program, David will be available to sign new copies of his book, A Point in Time, at the signing table in the rear of the room. Uh, my name is Craig Snyder. I'm the executive director of Philadelphia's Freedom Center. It's a nonprofit organization committed to the ideals of individual and economic liberty, limited government, and defense of free societies, which are currently under attack by enemies, both religious and secular, at home and abroad. David Harwood was born into a family of dedicated communists whose parents were literally card-carrying members of the American Communist Party. As a red diaper baby growing up in New York, David was indoctrinated into the intellectual world of collectivism. And as a young man, he became intoxicated with the hopeful idea that all of humanity could be saved from its historical misfortunes if they were only to abandon the old world institutions and to adopt the Marxist idea of social salvation. Marx's creed from each to his own ability to each to his own need became the mantra of a generation of Bolsheviks, Bolsheviks the world over who were committed to the salvation of humanity. David was a foot soldier in the war of ideas and as his best-selling novel Radical Son explains, it was not until the early 50s when the truth of Stalin's genocidal atrocities were confirmed that David broke ranks with the communism of his parents and became a founding member of the new left a kinder, gentler form of social progressivism. That was the idea anyway. David, along with his writing and business partner, Peter Collier, published Ramparts, the literary screed of the new left. And he became a prominent leader of the anti-war, anti-establishment left. As Radical Son, his autobiography details, a series of events culminating in the murder of his friend, Betty Van Patter, by the Black Panthers, this was the seminal moment that led to David's abandonment of the left and the embrace of conservatism for which he earned the everlasting enmity of his former comrades in arms. David is a writer, a prolific writer, and he is a thinker, a deep thinker. David tells the truth, the whole truth, and he is honest, brutally honest, a good writer, and David is a good writer, writes the truth. Not little truths, but big truths, with a capital T. To write the truth, one has to dig deep into his or her own personal experience. That is not easy. David has made life-changing reversals. His only loyalty to find and speak the truth. Truth with a capital T. In his new book, A Point in Time, David shares his insight into man, God, and society in a way that only he can. It is an honor and a privilege to present to you a man of high moral clarity, deep insight, and a clear voice in a world threatened by political correctness and cultural relativism. The world needs more men like David Horowitz. I respect him, I admire him, and I am proud to be his friend. Ladies and gentlemen, David Horowitz. Thank you, Craig. <clears throat> I want to thank Craig and, uh, and Brittany for putting together this event and uh, putting together the Freedom Center in, uh, in Philadelphia, my home away from home. Uh, Karl Marx wrote Capital in four fat volumes, which he never finished and which are virtually unreadable. Um, <clears throat> and when he was asked why he wrote such a long book, he said, because I didn't have time to write a short one. This book I've written is quite short, but it took me three years to write and a lifetime uh, to gain the understanding that I tried to communicate uh, in these pages. Uh, and the book itself began when I picked up a copy of the 
Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, which is a book that I remembered from my father's bookshelf, uh, which he had just kept from college. I, uh, it was not a book, as I will explain shortly, that he would have uh, wanted to read as an adult or uh, would have liked or learned from. Um, Marcus Aurelius was the 19th emperor of Rome. He was the emperor in the film Gladiator. And uh, he was, uh, by all accounts, a, a good man. Uh, and he was also a philosopher, uh, not a formal one. He, he took notes to himself. And these notes were found in the Middle Ages by monks who saw in them a prefiguring of their own faith. Uh, and they gave them the, the title that we know them by, the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius was a Stoic um, and a kind of hyper-realistic view of life and therefore a somewhat grim one, depending on your perspective. Um, his philosophy could be summed up in, in these words of his that uh, uh, be not troubled for all things are according to nature and soon you will be no one and nowhere. Um, so this was a, a view of life unredeemed by a either a, a romantic vision or a, a religious one. And uh, my father was a progressive, he was a communist, but uh, all progressives share, share this vision. Um, he would not, he, he, he thought he could change the world or he was participating in a movement to change the world. Whereas Marcus Aurelius uh, did not believe in progress or, or history for that matter. He said, um, <clears throat> to those who have seen present things have seen all, both everything from all eternity uh, to everything that will be to the end of time. That is, things don't change because we are basically creatures just like we're animals um, and our uh, our unhappiness is caused by our consciousness of the fact uh, that one day we will be no one and nowhere. Animals just live in the present. But if you think about the future and think about the past, uh, it can cause you a lot of, a lot of problems. Uh, progressives are really motivated by the desire to escape this world. Um, the world, when they look at the world, uh, it's, it's too unjust to use their, their phrase. And of course it is. I mean, bad people are rewarded, good, good people die young, innocent people are tormented and suffer. Um, so people like my father uh, escape, instead of trying to deal with this reality or for one reason or another, they're unable to, um, they want to escape it by, cha by creating a new world. Um, that's what progressivism uh, is about. Um, <clears throat> as a, I, I was brought up in this, in this tradition, and therefore, of course, you never lose the memories of the way you saw things when you were younger. So there was a passage in Marcus Aurelius that just brought me up, and it's, it's part of his, his advice of how to deal I mean, uh, stoicism is basically don't sweat the small stuff, but don't sweat the big stuff either. Um, so <clears throat> in this passage, he says, uh, when you rise in the morning, say to yourself, I shall meet today intrusive, ungrateful, arrogant, deceitful, envious, and, char and uncharitable men. But don't bother yourself about it. This is the advice part. He said, is it possible that there will not be shameless people in the world? It's not possible. Therefore, do not require what is impossible. That's the stoic view. And that's the complete antithesis of everything that I was brought up. And when I was brought up, if you meet uncharitable, ungrateful, envious people, you change them. Uh, I, I was always proselytizing uh, when I was young. And... Uh, I mean, if you just 
look out at the news today, I mean, you, know, I see you, have, you have an encampment in your city center, as they have at Wall Street, 